your history Buildings and people and memories and dreams Who better to tell us than those who were there There's so much to learn from the stories they'll share Living history This is Ted Goldsboro with our Living History program. Today we're going to be talking with Ed Minchell, who grew up in Penwin, graduated from Lower Marion, worked for Auto Car. So here we go. Now, Ed, uh, can we go over to the Penwin School yes. over there? All okay. Right. Uh, you have two pictures here. This is the Penwin School as I know it. About when was that built? And it was built in 1930. And who was the architect and, and or builder? Archite uh, th there's a story. Okay. The architect of this church, uh, pardon me, of this school, uh, was Ralph E. White. And you'll see it etched on the stone inside in the lobby. Well, Ralph White Jr., his son, and they only lived a block away from this school up Haverford Road mm -hmm. in a sort of secluded home in behind a big hedge and trees. Mm -hmm. And somehow I became friendly with him, and I don't think he was in my grade in school. I think it was all ahead. But um, in the summertime, because he was a rich guy, rich boy, he had a season ticket to the Philadelphia Zoo. Mm -hmm. And Ralph White Jr. and I would pack a lunch bag, put it in our little basket on our bicycles, and ride our bikes from Penn Wynn all the way down Hereford Road over through Fairmount Park to 34th. Jeez, street geez. where the zoo is yeah and spend a day at the zoo How old have a you, ball man? well we were grade school Jeez. we were grade school and your mom knew yeah. she packed the lunch yeah, I'm, Ralph White's taking me to the you know now you have to understand traffic was nothing like, you couldn't even compare traffic with the day mm -hmm. I mean when we rode through uh, Fairmount Park to get to the zoo mm -hmm. seldom did we pass any cars mm -hmm. now this is in the 30s you know, Hard to believe. It would be probably uh, 37, 8, 9, mm -hmm, 38, 9, mm -hmm. you know. The end of the Depression. Yeah, well, it was still still, mm -hmm. <laughs> still gone. You saw those bills in 1939, yeah, yeah. Uh, $141 for the year for heating. Mm -hmm, you know, it's mm -hmm. different. It was a different world. Mm -hmm. Anyway, his father was the architect of this school, and maybe you know if he was architect of other schools mm -hmm, in the uh, mm -hmm. I in think the he was. I think that's possible. Yeah. Now, um, now, you see all the debris around here. This is before the buildings occupied, and this is um, very shortly, probably the first picture of it when it was occupied. Finished, yeah. And this is, I went in there, I started in there in 33, so it was only a three year old building. Yeah. Yeah. See the nice American flag there? And see, <laughs> these, if you notice the ground around that, there was a big front lawn, there was a side lawn that came all the way up to the next street. There were seven acres of ground there, mm. and they had a playground that you could play football in. Mm. Mm. And, a, and a story that I've been told, and I don't know if this is while I was still in Penguin or after I left Penguin, but that field was large enough to be a football field. I know that, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. it was a whole block. Okay. The Philadelphia Eagles used to practice preseason mm. on Penguin School Field. Oh. Oh. I don't know if it was just one season or several, uh -huh. but I got that word from other okay. other folks that lived in Penwin that knew me. Uh -huh. you know. so uh, probably did, true. Weren't there terraza floors or yes. tile on the wall? or can you Both, tell? yeah. And okay. they had tile on the wall even in the hall up to this level. Glazed and tile. Then, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hard, and tile, mm -hmm. hard tile. And mm -hmm. then from there up, you know, where you would post bulletin board and stuff, mm -hmm. they, they had a uh, plaster. Mm -hmm. uh, a wet plaster. Genuine, genuine real yeah, plaster. Yeah, right. <laughs> the old days yeah, plaster. Yeah. Which I could just tell you about a plaster job in 232 oh, Henry yeah, Road yeah, yeah, while yeah. we're at it. Yeah. And prices in the Depression. Okay. In the 30s, uh, probably I think 38 or 39, the ceiling in the dining room, pardon me, yeah, in the dining room of 232 Henley Road was all full of cracks and having problems, you know, serious problems. So there was a an individual contractor plaster in the neighborhood. His name was Bradley. And my dad engaged him to, to repair that. And I, I happened to look at some of the old bills in recent times. And I pulled out a bill from Mr. Bradley 
doing the plaster job in Penn Wynn on the dining room. Now, I remember the job was quite extensive because he had a drop cloth covering the whole floor, mm -hmm. and the room was tied up for two days. And he cleaned out, cleaned off all the bad plaster and everything, and redid the ceiling and touched up down the sides. And the bill said, uh, plaster, dining room plaster. Uh, and it said, labor, $7, mm -hmm. materials, Two dollars. So that was nine dollars <laughs> for two days' work. <laughs> nine dollars. <laughs> well, I guess the materials didn't cost him much, but he yeah, spent two yeah. days there and got nine bucks out of it. Yeah, if he, yeah. if he probably got the material for about a dollar, you know. Yeah, but he had all that work because yeah. you have to do the plaster, let it sit overnight, to do mm -hmm. the finish, mm -hmm. do all the preparation the first day. The second day is less time. Mm -hmm. He probably didn't fill out the whole day, and he finished it off. Uh, now we've had uh, keep digging down here and see if we got anything more okay. about okay okay the interior of the Penwood School on the second floor, uh, right above where the lobby area was, uh -huh. the lobby and the front hall. There okay. was a big room, and it was kind of like a, I'd say a, a club room or a relaxing room for teachers, mm -hmm. but it may have also been incorporated with the a library, as I recall. Okay. But I remember at one end, they had an actual fireplace. Mm. That was really, mm. it was like a nice, mm. gigantic living room. Wow. It just seemed funny in a yeah. school, you know. Did you ever gather around the fireplace? I or? don't remember being in that room mm. too much. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Did I the remember, kids... I remember the gymnasium a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It looks like the kids are down on the floor here. I don't know what, what they're doing, like acting out. Uh, a scene or something like no, being boats? I think, or I think I that's know. kindergarten class. Okay, okay. You know why? I think, I, you know, in kindergarten class, uh, not every school, uh, school systems were pretty far along when they had a kindergarten. Yes. Most in schools didn't have. have. Yeah. That's right. You started and, in first grade. I had from day one for me mm -hmm. and, and all mm -hmm. my siblings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one thing about kindergarten. You were issued a little rug rolled up like oh, this, oh. and you had, in, uh, usually kindergarten only lasted a half day. Yes, still. And uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. and you would be issued this, and there would be a break, and you were, it was a nap. You had to take a nap. It was a, <laughs> Whether a you wanted to nap. or not. Huh? <laughs> and everybody laid these little blankets on that hard, cold floor, yeah. you know, and laid on them. But wow. They were wow. blankets, they had little fringe on the end. They oh. were little rugs. Uh -huh. you know, did like they belong to the school? Oh yeah, they were issued to you. Oh, you, didn't, you never oh. took them home. <laughs> you, you had a little locker or cubby hall, I think, I a little see. place for each, yeah, each yeah, student. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now how about, I don't know, is that the cafeteria? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Over here is the serving part, yes. Okay. And okay. I, I saw this cafeteria all the way up to, remember when we did a, a series on the Penguin School only? We had that uh, reunion yes, and so forth? Yes, yes. And I went out and researched the school, and that there wasn't an awful lot of change just in the furniture. Okay. It's a real long room. Mm. Now they had a divider they could put oh, across and it use it for some other room, okay. like uh, instrumental music teaching oh, or something, you know, oh, on the oh, other oh, end. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was yeah. real long. The whole okay. student body had lunch at one time. Oh. There was no two shifts or oh. anything. When yeah, I went to Balakinwood, right. I remember there were shifts. Yeah, there were shifts. But it yeah. wasn't as big a dining room either. Balakinwood, yeah. as big as beautiful as that school was. Yeah. But Penwin really had okay. a big. Wow. So yeah. I used to love it when Mom would give me a few coins so uh -huh. I could eat there instead of packing my lunch. Okay. Okay. See, so I had a lot of choices. You could quite often we had a pack because mm -hmm. she had we had four kids, but mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. we only had two during the Penwin school. They moved to. After Bob and I got out, okay, you know, okay. Uh, I think uh, one of my brother, my other brother, went there a little while, but then they moved into uh, for that Berwyn area out in Valley okay. Forge. Okay. Now, any other Penwyn school stories? Like, did you play a musical instrument? Yeah, I uh, I played a violin by my mother's choice, because you know, boys, you want to do the drum or the trumpet or something, mm -hmm. but a violin. And because uh, she played a piano and she wanted to accompany me, uh -huh, I think. Uh -huh. She wanted to be part of it. Uh -huh. So about third grade, I think they uh, allowed you to start in third grade. They issued a thing, and a, violin, or tr a violin, trumpet, whatever. The school issued you one. They mm -hmm. didn't charge you rent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they usually were not the best instruments, you know. And um, 
that was your first year, and you get accustomed to your thing. And then in fourth grade, you can become part of the orchestra, grade school orchestra, fourth, mm. fifth, and sixth. Mm. So in third grade, after she saw how I was doing with the violin, uh, they decided to buy one. So they went to West Philadelphia, down on Market Street. Primavera was the name of the music. Oh, it was an oh. Italian. That's old time. In, in, yeah. That's still, I believe. Primavera, it was a big yeah. name. Yeah. 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 And they bought a second-hand copy of a Stratus Various. Oh. And I remember I didn't bring the bill with me because I hadn't located it, but I have oh. in, in the past located it. Thirty-seven dollars for a copy oh. of Stradivarius. Now that would be nineteen thirty-seven. I'm guessing oh, 36, 37. That's a lot of money. 37, yeah. So. Um, Did you pay cash? No. They paid $9, I think, or something, and then $7 a month. You know, it was $9 down, uh -huh. <laughs> and then monthly finish On up the time. Bill. Yeah. But the payoff was um, in 39, that'd be my sixth grade, 39, 40. In 39, my last year, because then I'm going into Ballot Kenwood and I'm still in the orchestra, and I made the district orchestra in grade school, which uh, the eight grade schools wow. each pick some of their students uh -huh. and put them in this traveling wow. district orchestra. Wow. We go around to all the schools. I got yeah, to see yeah. all the schools Jeez. and not go to class sometimes. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, when she saw that, you know. I'm going into Ballot Kenwood, and I'm thinking of Herman Gears now. I can't help but think of Herman mm -hmm. Gears. Mm -hmm. um, she decided I ought to have it tuned up, fixed up, like mm -hmm. the bow needed restringing. Mm -hmm. So that's 39. I pulled out a bill for that just recently. Nine or no, two dollars okay. and fifty cents wow. to, to restring. restring the bow <laughs> and clean it up. Yeah, you know, I didn't need any new strings or anything because uh -huh. I took good care of it. Wow. I remember I had a chin rest. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I had to buy a mute, because oh, sometimes you play oh, the violin muted, you know, they have a different oh, sound, like chamber music, you know. Wow. wow. So. Now, I, did you have lessons? How'd you learn yes. to play? Carl Natecki was the regular teacher. At, at school? At Penn Wynn. And he, I think he did most of this. I think he traveled around. Mm. But once a week, I would get a lesson from him and mm. an assignment. And I had to practice at home under my mother's vigilance. Mm -hmm. And she would accompany me on the piano. That was a big help. Mm. That's probably why I made mm. the district orchestra. Yeah. Did he charge the teacher for extra lessons? <laughs> yeah. In the summer, I remember two different summers that she hired him. And it was 3 or $4 an hour. Mm. Pretty steep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would only come an hour, you know, it's three or four dollars for it. But at that mm -hmm. time, we were in 126 Henley. I think they were doing a little, you know, Dad was a little better. He had moved up. He was service manager at the factory and okay. so forth. What, what factory is he in? Ardmore. In auto car? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> What's the name of that company? Around my neighborhood, you'd ask, where's your dad worker? The auto car. The auto, the auto car. car. Yeah. I always right. said the word the. The, the, the yeah, auto car. The, yeah, the you auto taught car. me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, <coughs> changing the, the subject. <coughs> library. Um, yeah. What? Let's go over the library. Tell I me can about remember, that. I can remember the library well. <coughs> Being the oldest kid in the family, I was the first one that mom suggested go down to the library and see if I could get a library card. This was a neat little library. You can see the building. Uh, this okay. library, was, I don't know the builder, but I do know the expense of the library, the running of it and so forth, was covered by <coughs> the community, by uh, citizens of the, uh, by neighbors. And Ellen Myers, who was one of my good friends, because she lived just one block away, her mother went around the neighborhood and took donations and paid for the librarian to be staffed for the books, mm -hmm. everything but the building. I think mm -hmm. the township might have done the building. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You'd have to research that, Ted, okay. uh, who paid for the building. But the setup, the books, the overhead mm -hmm. and everything, it had to have heat. It was a regular little mm -hmm. house. It was mm -hmm. like a little Cape Cod okay. two-room house. And, this, this and was it was sitting on the corner of Henley Road and Manoa Road, 45-degree angle. This okay. walk you see in the front went right out to the corner. All right. And this set way back, had a nice lawn all What's around. What's there it. now, a house? Yeah, I think it's just a home okay. in a normal position. But this is, this is, I mean, it was a one-room 
library. It was one big room, yeah. Oh, okay. and there was a bathroom okay. in there, of course, okay. for the librarian in yeah. the back. And the wow. One room, and it's all surrounded by books. And she sat in the middle of that room with oh. a big desk, and oh. she had these uh, card uh, catalogs, box, catalog yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I just remember, it, to me, I don't know why, but that it excited me to have mm -hmm. my own library card and. It, it, you tuck it in a little envelope in the yeah, back yeah, of the yeah, book, yeah, yeah. and she'd stamp the date when you came back. You yeah. know, if you were late a week, that was seven pennies you owed. Uh -huh. It was a penny a day. Penny a day. For <laughs> yeah. Penny a day for going overtime. Now you mentioned uh, a, a man named Herman Giersch. Could yeah. you, could you talk about him? That's one teacher that's still around from those days. Now he lived in Penwin, but he was teaching at Balakimwood before he was drafted into the service. So when I went from Penwin School in 1940. To 41, I went into Balakinwood. Which was practically brand new. It was brand new. I was the first seventh grade class to go all the way through. Two years prior, they went eight and nine went in there. Okay. But my music teacher there, instrumental music teacher, was Herman Gears. Well, when we had our 50th or 60th class reunion, Herman Gears was around, and I couldn't locate him, but he could have come. Uh -huh. And he's still, he's 96 now, and he's still rolling. Still I mean, he, he yeah. runs through the halls of Granite Farms where he lives, and runs the programs down there, and tunes their piano. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. that's, that's he's a still everlasting Her Herman Gears he's a legend. Gears. Yes, yeah. he is. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> on Manoa Road was a little shopping district, I guess, yes. what, a block of stores? Yes. They were known by the neighbors as the Penguin Stores. That's okay. Awesome. Because... If you didn't get it in the Penguin stores, there was nothing else around. You had to go into West Philadelphia. That's where a lot of shopping was done, or up to Ardmore. Okay. That, that was basically it. Uh, what stores were there? Well, <clears throat> as I remember them, these buildings on this picture look almost the same. Uh, it started down, going down to Haverford and Manoa Road to that corner. Haverford and Manoa. Yeah. Coming up Manoa, going south. In other words, that was North-South Street. Uh, there was a church, the Penwin Church, just a one-story church. And never, that was the only church in Penwin, too. Mm, mm. That's where a lot of us went to Ardmore, St. Paul's Lutheran and so oh, forth, I Ardmore. See, see. Anyway, after the church, there was a little driveway, a space. The church had a little iron fence all around it, a little driveway. And by the way, the church is where the Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts met, everything. Mm. The uh, Strawberry Festival, all the affairs mm. of the mm school, I mean of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. were held there. You okay. know. And we just knew it as the Penguin Church. Mm -hmm. I found out later it was probably an Episcopalian Church, mm -hmm. but I didn't it's know Sort that. of like a community yeah. center, kind yeah. of. Kind yeah, it was. It was. Okay. So after that little driveway, which led around in the back of the stores, where the stores were serviced by the vendors and so forth, was the Penny Candy Store. <laughs> that was a favorite with all the kids oh. in the neighborhood. And work your way on up to the middle. I forget the different stores, what they were, clothing store, a shoemaker, and so forth. And you get up to the middle, and you had the Penwin Pharmacy. We call it the Penwin Drug Store. That's what everybody, that was the only one around. Mm. And uh, that's where we went for ice cream. That's where we went for milkshakes. That's where we went for a down the line soda, you know. Mm -hmm. you, a little bit of extract from each flavor and oh, then carbonated yeah, water or yeah, down the yeah. line. I don't know what it tasted wow, like, but it was wow. a popular thing. So it had a, it had a counter yeah, where you could sit yeah, on stools. Yeah. And Behind that is where the bulletin was delivered to the boys. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, coming up, after the drugstore was the barber shop, as I remember. Ernie's barber shop. Ernie Pellegrino, I think, was his name, where I got my first haircut. Mm. Believe it or not. And I... I was I didn't get a first haircut in a barber shop until I was able to ride a bike. And my mm -hmm. mom let me go down there. I went in there. I was still a pretty little kid, but I just had a small bike, you know, my first bike. I, I'm going small as twenty six inch. I went in, got my hair cut and listened to all the men talking about the racetrack and all different stuff, you know. <laughs> it's a big gab fest in there with the men of the yeah. neighborhood, yeah. you know. I was one little kid and they, they treated me special, you know. Oh, Boy. Oh. I came out of that get on my bicycle, I'm out on the patio, on cement patio in front of the thing, and this man, he was not being mean, but he came down, he said, he looked at me coming out of the shop and he saw my hair all cut. 
Oh, boy, he said, Squirt just got a haircut. <laughs> well, you know, a little kid, a whole little kid to squirt. squirt. You, know, you know, I thought it was a big deal, you yeah. know. I had come out, <coughs> nothing but men. I came out of the barber shop, and this guy says, Oh, Squirt got a haircut. I was so hurt, I went home and told my mom, I swear. <laughs> and you've never forgotten that. <laughs> no, you forget that one. That's, that's funny. But anyway, after, after Ernie's was a grocery store called Sweeney's. And one of the ways we made money, you, you could get approval to go in there and wait in the front of the store uh, where the desk and the register and the phone was, and people would call in orders. And I had a, you'd have a little wagon that you pulled behind. Mm. You could hook it on your bike, mm. little express wagon, mm -hmm. and you would haul the groceries out to different people to call mm. them in. There were bags mm. of groceries, like mm. this people who went, went, uh, have a name on the bag, two people, oh, you know. Oh. And you could get, you would probably get a quarter. A tip. Sweeney gave nothing. Oh, okay. okay. Just the privilege of delivering them uh -huh. is what he gave. Well, now, did you collect from the people? or No, you just took it. No. Uh, I guess they paid. They had they charge billed, accounts. Yeah, billed once a month or yeah, something. Yeah, they had okay. charge accounts. But they'd give you a tip. Yeah, they oh, just okay. didn't want the inconvenience going in. They'd just call oh, up and okay. say, I want some of these. Oh, I want cool. peanut butter. I want, you know. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't do that at the no. Acme today. No, no. But that's yeah. how a lot of that went wow, on. Wow. And it wasn't too far to go, you know. Penguin wasn't that big, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you'd take something out four or six blocks. But Were the faster you could do it, you know, yeah. you only got twenty-five cents per drop. Yeah. Were there other kids who did this? There was usually two at a time. Okay. But sometimes it was better when there was one. Wow. See, but two at yeah, a time, yeah, of course, yeah, gave yeah. better service. Yeah, yeah. But uh, wow, I think this is every day, like every weekday. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. and Saturday. Yeah. Would you do it after school? Summer. Oh, in the summer. Oh, I, okay, I know. Okay. I, I, other kids might have done it at the school. Uh -huh, but uh -huh. I'm sure that, that that business dropped off in the wintertime during yeah, school yeah, yeah. or wintertime during bad weather. Right. But I just remember doing it in the summer. Now, today, um, most of those shops are gone. Uh, yeah. There are very few retail stores that are in there. There's a dry cleaner, mm -hmm. and there is the pharmacy, Howard's See, Pharmacy. In this area here, that's where the Penland Farmers. Oh, is this the farm? Uh, right here. Okay. How far up? Yeah, okay. One thing I know, of course, they've changed the facade in the front. The front's mm -hmm. a little bit different, but mm -hmm. the same old pavement, you know, which was three about three blocks of cement. Nice place in there. P kids would ride their bikes around in there, believe okay. it or not. Or mm -hmm. when we became teenagers, we would flirt, stand outside the uh, pharmacy and flirt with girls. Okay. You know, the soda fountain was inside. You yes. You could yeah. treat one to a milkshake. Or okay. Something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's where you, uh, I don't know, you just messed around with girls. You didn't do mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. You never went on dates or anything. You just yeah. you collect down there in the summertime. A hang out. A hang out. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. For teenage boys but and girls. I, and I wanted to make the point for, for our audience that most of these stores are not retail anymore. They are chiropractors, dental practice, yeah. insurance companies, real estate office, caterers. So you can't go there and get your screen door fixed. Or penny candy. Or penny candy. <laughs> no, no penny <laughs> that's candy. That's what, no. you know, no. it's the greatest thing. And I guess the kids that they in Penn win, if there aren't What's many it, kids there. It's hard. Uh, you know what we did? That was a big deal because. How, but how could that shopkeeper? If you could get a nickel, if you could get a nickel. How could that shopkeeper make enough money selling penny candy? Well, he had newspapers. Oh, okay. And, and, and magazines, maybe. But uh, the basic thing for kids, the, as we saw it, we called it the penny candy store. Mm -hmm. He had other mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. okay. He had other stuff. Uh, now, but, uh, we got <laughs> what? what's this building? Okay, this is the Penwin Fire Company firehouse. And that's just as almost as it was when I was a kid, except for this addition on the end here. They made it look just like the same building. When I was a kid in Penwin, <clears throat> they had two fire engines. One was uh, about a 1930 to 32 uh, American La France, it was called. That was the make. The other one, I don't know the make. It was a smaller truck. It just had a little tank, little ladders, and usually mm -hmm. they ran it out the what we call field fires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would hear the fire whistle, which I don't even see it there now. I don't know that they have one. It had a big whistle on the top, okay. and you could hear it throughout the whole community. Yeah. That served as a warning during World War II for uh, blackouts. Right. Remember and the air raid warnings? Right. But these are volunteers, right? 
totally volunteer. Okay. There was not a paid person in there. Mm -hmm. uh, during the war, during World War II, some of the teenagers that were, st uh, you know, were still living in Penn Wynn, still mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. uh, as young as under 17, under 16, or pardon me, under 18, would be volunteers. Okay. I knew one. Now, Ed, um, can you tell me about what you did for fun when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the big ones in winter is sledding. Sled riding? Yeah, sled. I mean, the regular flexible flyer, two runner sled. There were long ones and mm -hmm. short ones and little ones. Were mm -hmm. Did you have any but hills in Penguin? Oh, yeah, Penguin was built on hills. <laughs> this hill, this hill. <laughs> All the way across, it was hills. I mean, uh, every, every east west street was down. Yeah. But, but you but, weren't uh, afraid to sled ride in the streets? No. Well, you know, traffic pattern. I mean, it wasn't. It, we sledded at night. Now, understand, there were never any snow plows. So the snow, we couldn't wait till the cars packed the snow oh, down. Oh, oh, oh. Cars were big wheels, you know, yeah, and you could see the yeah. tread. Well, they would pack down the oh, thing. Oh. Then it was good to sled. Oh. In the evening, when the sun went down, it would get icy. Oh. In the top of Henley Road, down to Manoa Road, you could get going about 35 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> well, two of my sledding partners, two, it's, it's funny, my two best friends at that uh -huh. time were girls. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Uh -huh. um, Molly Roach and Ellen Myers. They were my sledding partners because the other ones on the other streets, the guys, they were in a different street, you know. And uh, we would do what we call belly flopping. And, you know, one would get on, the second one would start pushing and jump on top of that, and the third one with the final push, yeah. jump on, it, it, it triple decked, going down <laughs> on the road. There were fathers down at the Manoa Road at uh -huh. the bottom making sure that no cars were coming. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Henley Road, no problem, there's no cars. Okay. But Manoa Road was more of a main road. Uh -huh. Still not many and cars. And they'd warn you. In the, in the evening, when there's snow on the ground, there were yeah, no cars. Yeah, yeah. But there was always a father or two down there, okay. or we wouldn't go down. That okay. was the rule. Okay. And they would make sure, and they would stop any car if it was coming, uh -huh. or warn us ahead of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed, uh, we're just about done, and I certainly appreciate your coming in today. And uh, this is Ted Goldsboro. I've been with Ed Minchell talking about Penwin. And we'll see you next time on Living History. Mm -hmm.